What's up guys, Shane here from Figure 3D Printing and today we're checking out some carbon fiber PLA from Pryline. Welcome back guys. So you know I've done lots of videos on a lot of different Pryline filaments and they've actually all turned out pretty good. And recently I reached out to them again and was like, hey I saw you had some newer products out there which is their carbon fiber. There's two different variants, but today we're checking out the PLA variant of it. And the first thing we're going to notice is the box is very different than the old ones. The old ones were a just a brown box with a sticker that held it shut. That was it. Very simple. But now they've got a full color box, white. It's a Pryline 3D printer filament. Uh, they have all of their check marks on there for what it is. So now they're using one universal box for all the different ones. They just stamp on which one it is. So this is the carbon fiber PLA. Uh, they've got some other languages on the back. Um, they recommend to store the filament in a sealed plastic bag after uh, or box after using. Make sure to insert the free end of the filament into the hole to avoid filament being tangled together. Keep dry, keep away from heat, and fire prevention. Some little things on there. Uh, so let's see how the spool is. All right, oh wow, that's definitely different. So uh, here they've got a full white sticker on the side. Before they just had this little bitty little uh, snippet on there, didn't really tell you much at all. But now we have a full sticker here. So it's telling us it's 1.75 millimeter filament. Tolerance is 0 0.03, it's a kilogram. Uh, it's in several different languages right there, where to contact them. And here on the back, this is what all the other ones had. Carbon fiber, uh, temperature 190, 210, base plate 30 to 50 C. It is in a non-reusable bag. Again, I'm trying to hope and pray that more companies will uh, get on that bandwagon. There is a desiccant pack shoved down in there. Make sure to go dry that one out, reuse that, gotta keep those. And here we have it. So uh, carbon fiber is gonna be a very matte uh, filament, has a very matte feel to it. Uh, the wind is a eight out of 10, not too bad at all. They do have this little extra snippet where it actually starts at. I recommend that you break this part off. It comes out of this little hole in the side. Uh, get rid of that because that actually has gotten caught on another printer of mine. I think it was the FT5 it got caught on and ruined a print because it could not get past that. Uh, so I've been snipping that off of all of them just to get that done uh, out of the way. Now carbon fiber inherently is a little bit more brittle than any other filaments, well, most other filaments. So if you bend it a few times, it's going to break a lot easier than standard PLA does. This one's actually holding up quite well. This one's actually holding up very well. Uh, other ones I've used, um, the last carbon fiber that I tested, definitely broke pretty quickly. Uh, sometimes you will get a clean snap out of it when it gets a lot of moisture. I'm thinking that the carbon fiber is a little more hydroscopic than standard PLA is. Uh, hydroscopic meaning that it absorbs a lot more moisture than standard PLA does. Uh, flexible filament is extremely hydroscopic. So you can get really horrible prints very quickly with that if you don't have it very dry. Uh, yes, yeah, so it does have uh, just a brief smell to it, a very plasticky smell when I first opened it up, but that is now dissipated. Uh, it is a uh, press and glued spool, but there is a little bit of play. So I guess it's just press fit. Actually, yeah, it's just press fit in there. Um, so there's a little bit of clicky play in there. Again, they got the full sticker on there. And yeah, so I'm super excited for this. I love printing with carbon fiber filament. It has an awesome look to it. It's just very special, I think. So I'm gonna get this loaded up on a printer. Oh, and this is abrasive. So if you are gonna pick some of this up and try it out, make sure you have a hard nozzle. Micro Swiss is probably the best out there. I use them on many of my printers. So on the GTEC A10, the uh, CR10S has it as well. Um, I think I also have it on the Hypercube has it, and I might have one or two others. Oh, the FT5 has one as well. That's not operational right now though. So I have lots of different options I can print this on. I'll try to print this on two or three of them if I can. And, um, but yeah, so just make sure hard nozzle, abrasive. You can use a brass nozzle, but after printing probably like one or two, you know, maybe like 10 hours of printing, so a third of the roll or a quarter of the roll, you're gonna ream out that 0.4 millimeter nozzle and it's gonna be a lot bigger. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, so, okay, now we're gonna get some prints done and I'll be back in a little bit with some results. So I have to say, filled filaments hold a very special place in my heart, especially like wood filled and carbon fiber filled. If you get your print settings dialed in, 
things can look amazing. You'll pretty much eliminate your layer lines just because of how they end up bleeding together with the, fi the extra fibers in there. Don't particularly know all of the science behind it. I just know it looks great. So I have some pretty awesome things printed here. These were all printed on the CR-10S because that has a PEI bed and it has a hardened nozzle from Micro Swiss. So carbon fiber filament is extremely abrasive. You really need to have a hardened steel nozzle for that. And by doing that, it's also not the best conductive conductor of heat. You will have to raise your temperatures just a bit. Uh, I've noticed up to five degrees is what I've had to raise for certain filaments. Uh, this one, I ended up printing it just at 205 where most PLAs I print at 200, 205 anyways, because I also print a little bit faster. But 205 seemed to be the sweet spot for this. I had almost zero stringing in any of this, which is really nice to see. And I did use glue stick on the PEI just to ensure that this would hold. I did have some very, very long prints. Uh, this mortar round was pretty long. I have uh, Robocop's nine millimeter here, which is humongous. Like I can't even get my hand on this. Is like a hand, this is a hand cannon for my dad. Like he's got those great big hands. But this turned out really, really good. Glue job, not so much, but we'll get there. And this is the piece that I'm going to talk about here first because this is the one that I had some problems with. But we need a closer look at them so you guys can actually see. All right, so this is like just this like head sculpture I randomly found and they had, it was only a render and they just had it with their like headphones sitting on it, which it looked really cool. But again, it was a render and no one had done a print of it yet. So I figured I will have a go at it. It turned out okay. I did not use support, but I ended up having some issues in the filament and I don't know why. So number one, obviously you can see lots of uh, retractions in there. I definitely did not have the retractions fully dialed in for this print. And I'm kind of sorry I, I didn't really do that properly. But if you look close, you definitely can see layer lines. Ooh, come on, you definitely can see some layer lines in there, but more so are these cracks. So again, this was printed at 205 degrees. And I actually think that was a little too low on this print. I don't know why, because the rest turned out just fine. But for this one, just because the sheer mass of it, I mean, as you can see, it's, it's a fairly good sized print. It just, it cracked on me here. And that was very odd of PLA. Maybe because there's the carbon fiber in there. And a few of these were a little over extruded. So there definitely was some irregularities going on during this print. I didn't use support and it did okay. These are some pretty steep overhangs. I actually had to actually sink this down into the Z plate some just to get this nice and flat and give me a larger surface. Because in the beginning, these two surfaces was tiny, absolutely tiny to where they touch the bed. So I need to sink it in, give myself a good surface to start with and then go from there. But if I cut it off even more so, I could get rid of all of this overhang and it probably would turn out better. And this part here competes completely in the air almost. So a smidgen of support might've done okay there. I just didn't want to waste the filament, but I just kind of wanted to give this a shot as it was a kind of cool looking print. All right, now to show you my standard print that I print again with every filament is my Fugatech maker coin that I created. And this is a beautiful print. It honestly is. There's not much retractions going on in there. I didn't have any under extrusions go on anywhere. And then if you look here where the supports were, looks gorgeous. There is still a little bit of this residue in here. That's from the glue stick. I did not wash this one off. I did wash this one. I did not wash this one yet, but that's okay. Either way, yeah, I mean, this really looks like a nice print. I'm very, very happy with how this came out. Kind of a detailed print. Uh, this is the Father's Day statue that somebody made. I really do like this one. I had one issue of under extrusion right through there. I don't know why, but it did. Other than that, there's no cleanup on this or anything like that. It just, it turned out really, really nice. You can see there's no stringing. It just, and I really like this print. Uh, it's an awesome Father's Day print. I think I'm gonna print a bunch of these uh, for some folks whenever they become new fathers. I think that'll be kind of fun for them. But yeah, I do really like this print and the carbon fiber just looks so much cooler. So here's the CT3D uh, floatable Benchy boat. And this actually, I didn't realize recently, this was modeled off of a toy that we found on Amazon. And I, I thought they just made this up. No, they actually copied this from a toy on Amazon, which is pretty cool to see. Again, glue stick on the bottom. You can see some retractions there. I probably should have made it a little bit faster to get rid of those, but it, it turned out to be a really nice print. I did do one vase. Uh, I, meant, I meant to do two, but I just uh, kind of forgot. And again, printed on that PEI with glue stick. It turned out really nice. It's really rough. I don't know if you can actually hear 
my hand on there. I mean, how rough it actually is. But there was no stringing, and when it's done in vase mode, you really do lose the lines quite a bit. You still can see some layer lines in there, but overall, it pretty much goes away, which is really, really awesome to see. This is the mortar round that I had shown earlier, and this prints in three parts, so it's this bottom piece and this nose cone. The nose cone, um, I wanted to, I tried getting in there, I think I got it in, oh there it, goes, it comes out now a little bit. Uh, I've never gotten this nose cone to go all the way in, I think I just need to clean up inside here a little bit, as you see there's no supports, but there, there is some stringing, some fall down in that. Uh, this prints up like this on the build plate, and it just screws in the top. But yeah, I've never got the nose cone to go all the way in. This is a little bit uh, easier to put most of the way in, but I think with just some cleanup, it'll do better. But yeah, it uh, turned out really nice. Again, you can see the retractions in this quite a bit, but overall, it's a good print. All right, and finally, here is the Robocop gun. And first off, I'll show you right here. I did not glue that in very good at all. There's a good three millimeter gap in there. Yeah, I suck at gluing things. I'm learning though. But the uh, main gun here, this whole part, prints in one piece, and yeah, that broke off before. I tried gluing, it didn't work. But this prints in one piece here, and it's just prints flat, so, and it's huge. I mean, that's my hand all the way around, look at that. But I mean, that is an enormous gun, and Robocop's a big dude too. But it looks really, really cool. So we have these two pieces, this is one piece, and this is one piece. So once you put all those together, it looks pretty good. I think. So carbon fiber filament can be a little on the brittle side. And, it, and people think, oh, it's carbon fiber reinforced, it'll make it stronger. No, no, not really. It's about the same. Maybe if it's in like a, a PTG or a, a polycarbonate maybe. But in PLA, it's actually pretty brittle. I've noticed on many different brands so far that I've tested. And this one is no different than those ones. It is still a bit brittle in there. But again, overall, it, uh, it glues together pretty nice. I do like the way it went together. The carbon fiber feels, just gives it a nice texture kind of to hold on to. I do wish I was a little better at gluing. That would look a little bit more presentable, but you live and you learn. Hopefully next time I will do a better job. So there is that. Overall, I enjoyed this filament. Uh, it's definitely not a, a premium carbon fiber filament that you get from some other companies like Protopasta, for example. Uh, their carbon fiber is pretty spot on. That also comes with the price. Protopasta filament's about $30 to $40 on the low end for their 500 gram spools. Uh, this is definitely not so much. This is almost half the price of that. So keep that in mind. You kind of get what you pay for with most filaments. A lot of PLAs are kind of grouping up in the right around that $15 to $25 range. Specialties are usually grouped up between $25 and $35 range, somewhere in there for the most part. But for doing projects like this, nice simple projects, I really did enjoy it. I did have some issues printing this on the GTEC uh, A10. I don't know why. For some reason, the, the Slicer Prusa Edition did not agree with some of the settings I was putting in there and it just kept jamming in that printer. It actually, it wasn't jamming, it was having a problem with, uh, I guess, how tight the spring is. It was just chewing through the filaments. And I tried printing hotter to make it a little bit easier, but I just had tons of problems on that printer. But when I put it on the CR-10S, it printed like butter. It, it, so, I mean, like every filament is a little bit different, so just keep in mind, do some testing before you start rolling out with gigantic prints. I probably should test a little bit more before I did this one, but, you know, YOLO. Uh, it does show you the differences when something is tuned and when it's not so tuned. So have that be what it is. So this filament was provided to me by Prylon free of charge for the purposes of review. No money was exchanged and I was not paid for my opinion. This is my opinion straight up on how this prints. So I hope you guys learned a little bit more about printing with a carbon fiber enforced PLA. If you did learn something, please give it a thumbs up or if you just enjoyed the video and you love my lovely shaved face, hit that like button. If you didn't, thumbs down, talk in the comments down below. Love to hear from you guys about this product. If you guys wanna stay in tune with what's going on, hit that big old subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get you notification when I upload new content. If you wanna support me financially, right down below me is a Patreon link. Dollar more gets you access to my Patreon feed and my after show. And if you wanna donate some other ways, there's one-time links and some affiliate links and some uh, coupon codes down there, that's what it is. And that way you guys save some money and a little slice of what you buy comes here to help me at the channel. So thanks for tuning in guys, until next time, happy friends.